Hi, my name is Mark Paulson, and in this video, I would like to give a short demonstration of the implementation of Virtuality, which is a reference framework of the Open Connectivity Foundation specification. The masterpiece has been made in collaboration with Schneider Electric and is demonstrated through a simple use case named the Virtual Coffee Room. The Open Connectivity Foundation is a foundation which goal is to deliver a standard set of applied protocols and specifications and to promote an open source implementation between the billions of devices making up the Internet of Things. The goal of the Open Connectivity Foundation's specification is to further add interoperability independent of the platform, chipset architecture, operation system or transport protocol. The architecture of the activity implementation can be seen in the image. The structure can be divided into two separate layers. You have the service layer and you have the base layer. The base layer provides the core functionalities in order to discover, communicate and apply security credentials to the registered resources. The service layer provides several primitive services to ease the development of integrating activity. The premises service provides several features such as offloading constrained devices, scene management, bridging of legacy non RLC protocols into the Arutivity ecosystem, and much more. Two types of devices exist. These are red device and light device. The red device implements the full Arutivity framework, which includes the base layer and the service layer. A light device is also known as a constrained device with limited memory and power, therefore only implementing the base layer of the Arutivity framework. Snyder's virtual coffee room is used as a proof of concept to encapsulate, clarify, and demonstrate most of the services and capabilities offered by the Arutivity framework. The use case implements several different platforms and operating systems. This includes an Arduino Duo, Android application, free Raspberry Pis, and Schneider's own Schnack and Freiboard. To demonstrate the capabilities of the Arutivity framework, only simple resources are registered on the targeted devices. The registered resources include LEDs, PCB buttons, and a temperature sensor. All for Bluetooth is implemented as seen in the use case figure. It is currently not working. Therefore, all communication is established through the router, which works as the intimidate of this application. All the services offered by Arutivity can be seen on the image shown on the screen. Services marked in green will be demonstrated through this use case. You can see the physical setup on the screen now. It consists of the free Raspberry Pis, the Radio Inodoo, the Schnack and Freya platform, and the Android application running on a Samsung Galaxy S5. The first service to demonstrate is the easy setup. It contains the functionalities to onboard and provision new devices to the network. As seen in the sequence diagram, the easy setup consists of three entities. These are the mediator, the enrollee, and the enroller. The mediator is the entity with the graphical user interface in which the user can onboard and provision new devices to a network. The enrollee is a new device that is not connected to any network, whereas the enroller is the targeted access point in which the enrollee has to be connected to. In the setup, the mediator is an Android application and the enrollee is a Raspberry Pi 3. The first process is to onboard the two devices as highlighted in the image. The enrollee will continuously search for a common soft access point which is created by the Android application. The soft access point network credentials have to be known in advance by both partners. Here you can see the application running the easy setup. First you have the enroll SSD and the enroller password. You further have the soft access point SSD and password as well as these are as mentioned static. Here you have the Raspberry Pi 3. Once we start it, it will then start to look for a start access point in which the Raspberry Pi will start to look for. We can then monitor the state of the process given the text on the screen. Now it's onboarding and waiting for the Raspberry Pi to connect. We can now see that it has connected and it now waits to 20 seconds until the provisioning process starts. We can now see that it will change to provisioning state as seen. It will now, through a post request, send the network credentials of the roller to the Raspberry Pi. We can here see on top of the screen of the Android 
its phone and it has been disconnected from the soft access point. From here we can then connect back to the network and see if we can through the device list and through the discovery mechanism discover the newly connect resource. By discovering we can see that here we have the, the like that we have registered on the Raspberry Pi and we can actually control it as well. It turns on and it turns off. The next service to demonstrate is the resource encapsulation service. It provides interfaces to discover and manage resources on the network. All of the connected devices can be seen here on the screen. If you go down to location, the device list, and perform a multicast discovery, you will see all the connected devices. We can then go in and manually choose which one we want to configure. The Arduino also provides the functionality to set the brightness of the light. We can then go in here and change the brightness of the chess LED to the Arduino 2. It is also possible to observe resources. For instance, here I have a button which I'm observing. Once I click the button, it will notify of a change to the application. It is also possible to configure the maintenance parameters of a device. These include factory reset, reboot, and statistical collection. I can reboot the device by clicking the reboot button. A method to check if the device is rebooting is by clearing the list and rediscover the devices. I can see that the resources are no longer present, resulting in the Raspberry Pi is rebooting. The resource directory is one of the two available services for offloading resource handling. The resource directory is a service in which a constrained device can publish a resource reputation and thereafter shuts its antenna down. The resource directory will afterwards respond to discovery cursors on behalf of the constrained device. The data flow of the resource directory can be seen on the sequence diagram. The first step is first to discover the resource directory in which the constrained device can publish its resource reputation to. Once it has discovered it, it will publish its reputation and shut down its multicast antenna. In the demonstration here, we have the Raspberry Pi, which is a contained device, and have the Schnark and Freya platform, which hosts the resource directory. After start discovery, it will find it will discover the resource on the resource directory. Once discovered, I can perform a unicast request directly to the device, as shown here. If I shut down the Raspberry Pi, the, the resource will still be discoverable. This is because it is still registered at the resource directory, as seen here. If I try to perform any request to it, it will not be possible because the device is no longer connected to the network. The last offloading resource service to demonstrate is the resource host. It continuously searches for resources which wishes to be hosted. Once a resource has been found, it will create a mirror of the resource and start to monitor and catch its attributes. All future restful commands will be achieved through the mirrored resource. Using simple discovery and get requests will offload those, these requests from the original resource. To demonstrate this, we can discover both the devices. We have the original hosting resource and the mirrored resource. First, we can check the original, which has its own IP address. Then we can go in and try to set the attributes of the resource. We then turn it on and turn it off. We can also go and check the mirror. We can see that it has a different IP address, which is the resource host IP address we can see here. Again, if we try to set the attributes, it will still send the command directly to the original resource. The scene manager is a service which provides logical control to multiple resources simultaneously. An example provided by the Irativity developers shows how the scene manager implements scenes to apply a specific configuration to each resource connected to the respective scene, as seen on the figure. The flowchart shows the implementation of the scene manager in the virtual coffee room use case. It consists of two scenes, start conference and stop conference. If a new resource is discovered, it is added to the two scenes with the respective scene action. If the resource type of the resource matches any of the followed resource types for the scene, such as a light or a button. Whenever a registered button notifies of a change in its resource reputation, the scene manager implementation will check if it's pressed down. If it's pressed down, 
it will evaluate the current scene state and execute the next scene state as shown. The scene manager is demonstrated here. First, all the results are discovered, as seen here. The scene manager then automatically implement the logic control and execute the scenes as seen, which will turn the lights on or off when click on a button. If we add a new device, for instance, like the Arduino tool here, the scene manager will automatically discover the resource and implement the logic control and attach it to the corresponding scene. If I click on the PCB button again, the new light will also achieve the same lots of control as the remaining likes because it is now implemented into a respective scene controlled by the scene manager. Thank you for watching this short demonstration demonstrating the capabilities of the RSVT framework.